Mr. Christopher D'Souza. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for allowing me to speak on this topic. I would first like to record my appreciation to the Singapore City Planners and the MND Planning Team that has really allowed Singapore's reputation as a city in the garden to flourish in the minds of so many who look to our city for urban planning ideas. This motion is meant to support that vision of Singapore being a city in the garden and by extension, being a place where people live around lush greenery, nature, and wildlife. It is with such a spirit that I wish to deliver this speech. Of particular importance to me is Dover Forest, which is a 33 hectare forest within my ward. I have looked very carefully at the environmental baseline study, which I must thank MND and HTB for so openly sharing with the public. But if one looks at the study, you will see vast numbers of plant and animal species, including species that are critically endangered. This has caused me some concern if we were to demolish the forest. Now, this forest is also between Gimo, Mount Sinai, Grove, Pine Grove and Holland Grove Estates. So it is not just a forest, but a shared and extended green landscape that the residents have for a long time admired and, gross, and, and grown used to. Ulu Pandan residents know that I have a record of both developing the land in Ulu Pandan to make the best use of it, but also, where possible, to preserve an environment of greenery to surround their estates. When Gimbo Link was being built some years ago, I walked the ground along the canal and worked together with different agencies to get signs hammered into the ground to state protected tree. It would be too easy to just say halt and don't demolish Do Dover Forest without giving alternatives. So in the spirit of partnership and transparency, I would like to share with URA and MND some possible alternative sites and in so doing also share the long-term aspiration for Ulu Pandan and how this fits in. I have given a significant amount of time thinking about how to preserve as much of the forest as possible. One way to achieve this is through the use of vacant sites. In considering possible alternative locations for the development of BTOs, I would like to propose the vacant plot of, of land next to the Ulu Pandan CC. In fact, in the Master Plan 2019, it is publicly stated that those two vacant plots of land have a gross plot ratio of 4.6 and 4.9 respectively. That, to me, is a golden opportunity to have a serious rethink about how we can grow, enhance, and rejuvenate Gimo Town. My idea is to use the 4.6 and the 4.9 gross plot ratio sites as BTO, site, BTO plots, as well as possible SERS plots in rejuvenating some of the older blocks in Gimo. I can appreciate that SERS is a sensitive topic. Although I am not expecting an answer today, given its sensitivity, I would like to put on record that my long-term aspiration, which I have given a fair amount of time thinking about, includes both an influx of BTO flats and also the rejuvenation of Gimo for the existing residents living there. When Gimo Link was built some years ago, the residents from the old blocks 9 to 12A through SERS moved to Gimo Link and the old blocks were demolished. That land which the old blocks stood on is now the vacant plot of land beside Ulupandan CC. 
This vacant plot of land opens the door to unprecedented possibilities of how we may use the land in as creative a way as possible. So when I say that the two plots completely vacant now can be used for both BTO as well as subject to MND's clearance for SIRS, I do not say that in a flippant manner. The older flats in Gimbo, which were built in 1976, are 45 years old. One such group of flats is a group of six blocks of three-room flats on the other side of the Ulupandan CC. The current gross plot ratio for those blocks, being blocks 1 to 6 Gimbo Road, is 2.8. I ask that the gross plot ratio be reconsidered so as to increase it. There could be a selective on block of these six blocks to the vacant plot of land next to the CC. This then will release the whole plot where these blocks one to six currently sit on, thereby releasing another jigsaw piece, another plot of land for my other residents who are living around Gimo Market, that is in blocks seven to 21 to be rehoused into that vacant plot of land, possibly through SIRS. The vision is to continue to keep the market as the heart of Gimo, while at the same time rejuvenating the whole of Gimo town through a deliberate and phased SIRS development and the use of high gross plot ratios. The land around the market can then be redeveloped for more and taller housing if my idea of offering SIRS to blocks 1 to 21 is accepted by MND. This will mean the ability to accommodate new residents in BTO flats as well as provide new flats with new leases for existing GIMO residents through SIRS. This is my suggestion as an alternative instead of felling Dover Forest. I can anticipate that there are constraints. One constraint that MND may tell me today in response is that the pieces of land I have in mind are insufficient to accommodate BTO and SIRS flats. My response, if I may, to that point is that there are two other underutilized plots of land in Gimo that we can use for planning purposes. The first is MOE's language center, which was the old, now defunct, Gimo Primary School. Residents of Mount Sinai as well as residents of Gimo would know that there is a huge old unused field there lying fallow. So that also allows for space for additional housing. If MND's view is that this is still insufficient land, although I don't think it is insufficient, but if MND's view is of the view it is still insufficient, I have an additional solution to propose. This involves questioning whether or not we need the old sprawling RJC campus to remain. In my view, it is underutilized. In fact, it is not housing any school now, and its fields are unused. According to the master plan, the campus is subject to detailed planning. I am offering a proposal for that detailed planning today. So I come here with solutions. Vacant plots of land next to the CC using the old RJC campus site and the big field next to the now defunct primary, Gimo Primary. All of these underutilized. Such a holistic rejuvenation of Gimo Town will allow it will allow it to flow seamlessly into Holland Village with the rail corridor being the natural green valley between the two towns. So if one can picture that, a rejuvenated Gimo with a green valley being the rail corridor seamlessly linking on to Holland Village and that town. Mr. Speaker, I'm also making a broader point. I believe in providing alternative plans and solutions within my own constituency. For example, when the former Nexus International School campus 
was transformed into a temporary dormitory to house essential migrant workers in June 2020, we welcomed these workers in Ulupandan. In the end, it worked out to the benefit of everyone. It also built mutual trust and respect between residents and workers. We, the residents of Ulupandan and I, did not take a NIMBY approach to the workers and have welcomed them to the Nexus site. In fact, we were discussing that it being called the Nexus International School, how wonderful it would be if after our essential workers came in and occupied the dormitory, there would be a nexus created between the workers and the residents. And I dare say there has been, fortunately. So the point that I'm making is if more BTO flats need to be built, we have a solution in Ulupandam. I'm not taking the easy way out by saying go build in someone else's constituency. The solution I am offering ties in with my longer term aspiration to both develop and rejuvenate Ulupandan while preserving greenery. That solution involves using vacant or underutilized plots of land around Gimmo to accommodate new residents in BTO flats as well as to rejuvenate Gimmo through a deliberate and phased SERST exercise. This allows for a compact community, allowing for the inflow of new residents to live alongside existing Gimo residents. Some of the new residents will be the children of existing Gimo families who will be able to buy BTO flats next to their parents. But this idea of conservation and having residents live within a green environment surrounded by greenery and nature is not something that has been crystallized by virtue of what we are debating today. This has been my long-term aspiration for the Ulupandan residents I serve. Allow me now, sir, to expand on this long-term aspiration as it foretells or provides insight into why the motion was worded as, I quote, preservation of Dover Forest in Ulupandan, unquote. It was worded such because it is part of a wider aspiration for residents, and it is not constrained to residents living in Gemo. If you can picture it from a satellite view, if we were to retain Dover Forest, it would mean that we have a wonderful loop of nature around the whole constituency. Dover Forest links up all the way to Clementi Road, where if you cross Clementi Road, the Ulupandan Park connector runs along and links up to my residence in Sunset Way. And there is a railway bridge that connects to an expanse of green land that goes behind the Sunset Way HTB estate and eventually leads to Clementi Forest, which then eventually leads out to the rail corridor and Bukatima Railway Station. If one comes back down the rail corridor and Bukatima Railway Station heading south, you will go through the estates of Old Holland, of Greenleaf, of Mount Sinai, and then back to Gimo. So a loop of greenery within Ulupandan itself. Parallel to this vision of keeping Ulupandan as green as we can, was our effort together with N Parks to create as many access points into the rail corridor for the residents in Ulupandan. So actually, we have managed to secure access at eight points. These points are at Holland Green, Greenleaf, Gimmo, Ulupandan CC, Mount Sinai, Bukatima Road, Ewart Park, Holland Road. And there are other estates within Ulupandan that will be able to link up to the rail corridor, especially through the Holland Green Linear Park, which we recently opened. For example, for residents living in Namdi Estate and Coronation Estate, all they have to do is cross Sixth Avenue walk down Laurel Wood Avenue, and they will get to Holland Plain, which will link up eventually to the rail corridor. My hope is that we will be able to have a footpath that connects Holland Green Linear Park to Clementi Road through the scenic route of Clementi Forest, which I should state I would like preserved where possible. In fact, there is a whole belt of condos along Bukatima Road 
that will be able to link up to the rail corridor through the skywalk above Bukatima Canal as part of the Bukatima, Nech Bukatima Rocho Green Corridor Initiative. So, if you can picture a satellite's view, that would mean everyone living in between King Albert Park and Sixth Avenue, both condo dwellers and house dwellers, will be able to walk down, connect to Bukatima Railway Station, link to the rail corridor, head south, head to Gimo, and down to, and down to Dover Forest. So, Mr. Speaker, the idea is to have Ulupandan residents live within a landscape of lush greenery. In order to do that, I have to be able to provide alternative sites and alternative solutions to protect Dover Forest. This aspiration for the constituency I serve, especially the phased rejuvenation of major towns, will take 20 years or more from today, very likely beyond my time as an MP in this House. But that should not stop me from aspiring for my residents today. What I am trying to get across today to the planners is the need to think long and hard before making irreversible decisions. A 40-year-old forest is home to creatures over many life cycles. Many life cycles of creatures and species create an ecosystem. That ecosystem has been adopted and made to become part of the wider shared landscape of, Ulu, of Ulupandan residents. There are other proposals, obviously, which I may not have time to go into, but these also include how we can bring nature and greenery and greater amenity to our residents living in fairer gardens, building a jogging and cycling flyover over Clementy Road to link the park connector from Pine Grove Estate to the Sunset Way Estate and also allowing Ulupandan residents in the Sunset Way HDB blocks to access the green corridor behind them that will link to Clementy Forest. I hope MND will consider these proposals, these aspirations, these hopes and dreams for Ulupandan. So, in conclusion, sir, it is with all this in mind, that is, the environmental baseline study, the desire of many Ulupandan residents to retain Dover Forest, the idea of it being part of a nature loop around the constituency, and the longer-term aspiration for Ulupandan as a constituency, that I stand today in the hope that the planners will revisit and will come up with solutions, some of which I have suggested, so as to preserve the Dover Forest. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, sir, I thank the Honourable Member, Mr. Christopher de Souza, for raising this matter. Mr. de Souza shared that the Ulu Pandan site, which some refer to as the Dover Forest, is close to the hearts of his residents. He spoke up very passionately about this topic. As someone who grew up in the area and spent much time exploring the spaces there, I can well appreciate these sentiments and the way that Mr. D'Souza described the vision that he has for Lupandan gives me a twinge of regret for moving out. So first and foremost, I want to acknowledge the concerns and wishes of Mr. D'Souza's residents. The Ulupandan site used to be a rubber plantation before it was abandoned. It was rezoned for residential use under the master plan 2003. We were mindful of this characteristic when planning for its development. Hence, the HDB engaged a consultant to conduct an environmental baseline study to inform our plans. Nature groups were consulted, and many residents living in the, in the area provided feedback when the report was published online. And we received a wide range of views. Some called for the preservation of the Ulu Pandan site and asked 
HDB to consider alternative sites in the area instead. And Mr. D'Souza mentioned a number of these sites in his speech. Others supported using the site for public housing so as to meet the needs of Singaporeans. However, however these respondents also called for the site to be developed in a way that allows for their children and their grandchildren to continue enjoying the greenery. We are studying the feedback and welcome more Singaporeans to provide their views as we refine plans for the Ulu Pandan site. HDB will extend the public consultation period for another four weeks. We will carefully consider the feedback received and share our plans when ready. We take this approach of consulting stakeholders and balancing the different needs of Singaporeans seriously. Minister Desmond Lee spoke about this important stewardship role earlier. Because land is scarce in Singapore, we have to plan judiciously. Recycle our limited land, for instance, through selling it on a leasehold basis, allowing us to refresh our land use and renew our cityscape and neighbourhoods. We optimise our limited land supply by co-locating users, increasing the density of land plots, redeveloping existing sites, and where it makes sense, going underground. For example, the East Coast Integrated Depot will incorporate three MRT depots and one for buses. Doing so will save 44 hectares of land. This is twice, about twice the size of Changi Airport Terminal 4. With careful planning, we can safeguard some of our ecologically important sites as green spaces, such as the Kranji marshes. And where we have to develop green sites, greenfield sites, we do so after careful deliberation, seeking to preserve and integrate natural elements into the developments. At the heart of these decisions, it's not just about balancing the various needs of Singaporeans today, but importantly, it is also about balancing the needs of today's generation with those that come after us. And that is why I'm very heartened that despite the differing viewpoints we received on Ulu Pandan site, there was a common thread running through the feedback. There was a strong desire to be responsible stewards for future generations. And we put in just as much thought and effort into conserving nature. It is part of our DNA, deeply intertwined with our Singapore story. The large greenery we see today is a result of dedicated and sustained efforts by generations of Singaporeans who have been greening our city and planting trees year after year for over 60 years. It's a result of deliberate decisions made by earlier terms of government who have safeguarded our green spaces, even as they developed our urban landscape and built homes for Singaporeans. But we are not done. We have a vision to transform Singapore into a city of nature. We will continue to intensify core biodiversity areas and their surrounding buffers and retain these sites where possible. We will continue to strengthen ecological connectivity through enhancing our networks of ecological corridors, such as the Bukit Batok Nature Corridor. This will better connect habitats in nature reserves and nature parks that it, that, to that in gardens and parks. And we are committed to do more. We will intensify greenery and integrate nature into our built environment. Example, through partnering the community to plant one million trees by 2030 and to implement more sky-rise greenery in our buildings and infrastructure. These efforts will help us mitigate the impact of urbanization and climate change and provide a high quality living environment for Singaporeans with greater access to nature benefits. Mr. Speaker, let me speak in Mandarin, please. Yi Jiang Xianzen, wo no wen go li jie di su sa yi yuan de ju ming de gu lu, ye liao jie ta men de ji qiu. Gen ju 2003 nian fa zhan zhong lan tu, wu lu ban dan de zhi yi kuai di, ye ju shi yi xie ren su cheng wei du fo shu ling de di fang, Bekwehua 
，我们也收集到各界的意见，大家的看法不尽相同。一些人主张保留乌鲁班丹的这块地，一些人则赞成赞成用这块地来建造祖屋，来满足国人的不同住房需求。建呃赞成建建建房子的人也建议小心的发展这块地，让后代子孙也还能够享受到这绿意。我们在研究这块地的发展计划，欢迎国人继续提出看法和意见。建物局将会多进行四个星期的公众咨询，我们会仔细考虑收集到的所有意呃建议和意见，日后公布相关的计划。咨询利益者，咨询利益相关者，平衡国人的不同需求，这一项工作，我们一一向来都抱着非常认真的态度在进行。由于新加坡土地有限，我们必须审慎的规则。我们不只是必须平衡国人眼下的不同需求，我们还必须在这一代国人的需求和后代子孙的需需求之间取得平衡。我们也在大自然保育方面投入了很大的心力。我们今日看见的满城绿意，是一代代国人努力的成果。大家过去六十多年来，年复一年、日复一日的栽种树树木，绿化这个岛国。我们之前的一届届政府，在发展岛国和建造屋房屋安顿国人之际，不忘保留绿地。这决定为新加坡铺设了一条绿色大道，朝着成为大自然中的城市这个目标迈进。Mr. Speaker, sir, in, in conclusion, we are committed to act as responsible stewards for Singapore and Singaporeans, for today's generations and those that come after us, striving to make good use of our limited land, preserving as much of our natural heritage as we can. We will continue to consult and engage with Singaporeans based on the feedback, consider the feedbacks and suggestions seriously as we balance the various needs. I'm confident that we can do so if all Singaporeans continue to see ourselves as stewards for what we have and for the future. Thank you. Question is that Parliament do now adjourn as many as of the opinion say aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Order, order. <laughs>